<laughs> Let's go all the way. <laughs> if you have a 2009 to 2014 F-150 or variation, you probably, if you've had it long enough, have dealt with a busted sunroof and you're probably wondering like, what the heck to do? Well, you can take it to Ford and it's between 3,500 to 4,000 or more depending on where you go, which is a lot of money, especially considering it shouldn't have broken. It's cheap plastic. We're gonna show you how to do it on your own. You absolutely can do this. You can do it. You only need some basic tools. I'll show you exactly what those are. There are videos out that cover like i mean like down to the every single nut and bolt if you want to watch them they're like an hour and 20 to an hour almost two hours we're gonna do this much shorter give you the highlights and it's gonna be fun so both sides are exactly the same you start out taking out these phillips screws one behind one here and then this comes out i'll show you how to disconnect it and then you take this piece out second screws out i still have it clipped in here to hold so i'm gonna pop this out and you gotta wiggle these a little bit. Remember, wiggling has your friend in these. Now see this wire I told you about? You just eat, gently fish this out. This is a little awkward. There we go. That's your plug right there. It's a squeeze one, and that's it. Tail this is out now. So that's it though, plugs right out. Do that to both sides. Take one screw out here, that pops out just the same. Then you can move on. All right, well that was easy, wasn't it? That was a piece of cake. See, you can do this. The next part is you've got to get this out. This is your controller for your rear windows and your sunroof, which obviously you do not want to use right now. And that's the other reason why I like getting this out. There's no accidental opening or closing this, right? It's grenaded. So what you got to do is get under here and you got to pop this down. And I'm going to tell you that when you're doing this, you're going to feel like it's breaking. I'm telling you it is. But sometimes you got to break stuff. Just kidding. I mean, sometimes you do, but in this case, you don't have to break it. You just have to pop it down. So you take that out and then you just take this clip. There's a button right here. You just press. It's almost like that. There's always some kind of button you got to press on these clips with board and you just slide that out. There's two of them. You slide this one out. Come on. There we go. That's that step right there. Uh, you can just same thing. Unclip this mirror right here and pop this out. You might not even need this, but it gives you more slack because this, this just sort of slides through. It doesn't actually have to go through, but it does tie into the wiring harness. So you might as well get it right now, right? So there you go. See these clips? Can you see these clips back here? Those are fixed. You can't pop down past that. So if you try and pull the front side down first, you will break it. I, I just wanted to be clear. You have to take this side that's towards the rear down first. That pops out and then it just drops down. So the same thing when you're putting it back in, you put it in, you pop it up. This is also a good time to say, whenever you remove something, take a moment to examine it like this because you just took it out. So you can see how it went back together instead of just hurriedly rushing through, which is tempting to do. And then being like, hey, did anybody remember how this went back together? From experience, right? So one more thing too, when you're taking this out, this, see this plastic tray right here? Can you see that? Can you zoom in on this one? See that? There's two screws here and here. You need, they're just Phillips. You just need to pull those out. And then that's it. And then this will be loose. Very important. Okay, on to the next step. So if you have a four door, you are gonna have a pillar here, a column, right? And so you've got to take apart more of that than I do with this truck, where I just have to take these two bolts out. But it's just clips on the top and bottom seat belt. You can figure it out. We don't have to here, but we do have to also take this out. Another thing that can help you if you need some more room is just taking the seat headrests out, whatever these are which is always a little bit, you gotta squeeze both sides. But those all come out and that gives you a little bit more room, see? Okay, back to work, pay attention. See these right here? To get this out, there's a little door, a little lever there. You see that little gap right there? Can you see that gap right there? So you get a little pokey tool and you put it in here and you very gently slide that down because this is really easy to break. And that's it, it's got a little hinge on it. And then you got your screw up there, you take that out and again, take both these out. And now we're getting somewhere, so we'll do that next. By the way, this is a seven, which is kind of unusual. Usually I expect it to be an eight, and you're gonna want a deep socket on this one. But now you don't have to go digging around. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and that's how it comes out. If you don't get a good fling on it, you didn't do it right. So, but what I want to show you is all we're taking out here is the plastic cover. 
this piece that actually grabs your door when it closed, you do not need to take that out, which is really cool. You just have to get this out, but you gotta fling it or you didn't do it right. Well, the next step is taking off some of this trim, which is super exciting. I should point out here, there are a lot of videos you'll see where people take the seat out. I am not taking the seat out. There's a lot more work involved in taking the seat out, including all the electric plugs and connections and the bolts that have to have uh, Loctite on them. And you can take it out if you want, but I don't think you need to. The other part is the headliner to get it down. There's two plugs back here. We're going to leave those in until we're ready because that's holding the back up. But you have one other problem or really four. You have these pillars that all have to come out. Now, sometimes people take these all the way out, but you, you don't have to do that either. Um, I think you can take them loose and just, just sit them to the side. But either way, you got to take some of this trim out. And all you do literally on this is just pull it down. So see how this, you just, just grab that top and just pull straight down. It's really that easy. Just be gentle with this because you don't want to damage this. And you don't have to take this all the way out. Because remember, whatever you take out, you got to put back. So it's going to kind of fall down. And if you want, you can just sort of tuck it aside. And then just, you know, be careful. Remember, there's airbags in here. So check this out. You got airbags here right and you got airbags up here and you got airbag back here it's really cool we got all these airbags but we don't want to damage those so just be aware that you got airbags and you certainly don't want to blow them up in your face so if you want to you can unplug your battery everybody's gonna tell you no matter what always when you work with airbags unplug your battery which i would agree 100 percent we're not actually working with the airbags though but just be aware of that so but it's a seven there it's also a seven here i'm going to show you how to take this side out because this side is different from that side. This side has this grab handle, so you've got to take both these bolts off. These just pop out, so you can just use your finger. But again, when you know how something comes apart, it's so much easier. That comes from the bottom, not from the top. That's gonna break that or be really hard to get apart. So you take both of those out. Same thing, so center and center, those come out. You take this loose and then this pops down. I'll show you. And thanks for hanging out with us, by the way. Isn't it better when you hang out? Oh, hey, guess what? These come out. <laughs> But look at that, actually, it's pretty easy. It's just some little tabs there. I'm gonna absolutely put that back in because- I did not lose that. Run, but that's cool. All right, you gotta remember, you have speakers on these. See these speakers right here? And remember, we're thinking about this ahead of time. Before we pull it out, what are you doing with? Well, there's obviously wires going to these speakers. So you can't go nuts. <clears throat> these are another compression fittings, I guess I'm gonna call them, which means you got this wonderful grab handle. You can just grab this and pull. Just don't, you know, yank it because I don't want to bust this wire. So just gently pull, start from the top. If you can get your finger under here, that helps. Don't forget about the airbag. Yeah, please don't forget about the airbag. And then this just pulls up and out. Now I see the wire right here. Well, you got a little issue because there's no connection on this. So you can do one of two things. You can take this, this speaker out and just set it aside, which we might do because I was hoping there'd be enough room to lay this down, but there's not. Okay, so. We're gonna take those two screws out and just let the tweeter sit aside because I was hoping this would stay like that. So now we are on to the next step. See this little plug? It just pops right out. There's just four tabs. You just gotta get under it. It's kind of a tight fit. It's right in that hole right there. It just literally pops out. There's nothing to it, but a couple of tabs. This uh, particular bolt right here has, it's just open, it feels like down there, so. Oh, so it could just drop into the abyss. Yeah, oh man, wow. That's sucky. Is that really that way? It's yeah, it is. There's a little lip on the bottom, so you might catch it. But the both sides just drop down into the abyss. Wow. Okay, well, whatever. That's that. And we'll do that to the other side. And then we're getting real close. We just got to take these out, and we're going to drop this down to finally get to what the where the problem is with this stupid frame up here. All you do is slide this under, and then just pry down. Now. Sometimes these do break, but I like to work kind of around them because see all these fins on there? That's what you have to basically s slide out. So it's, it's a bit, right? That's a, like a big nail. That's it, we do that on both sides and then we'll start dropping this sucker down and it'll be amazing. I have waited, as you can tell, to take out the sunroof until now. Now, a lot of the videos will say, take this out first. You can, but here's my thinking on that. What if I had emergency need to drive the truck? I could still drive it right now. I could drive it. There's no reason why I can't. So that's why I wait till I'm like, it's time to take this out. You have to take this out before you take the frame out and this sunroof can kind of get in the way. So the way you do this is there's, it's pretty simple. There's only four screws. 
Their hacks, oops, I'm so sorry I bumped you. It's a T20, okay? T20, remember that, T20. So those four come out and then it just lifts straight up. So you either have to lift it up and then turn it and bring it down through or hand it over to somebody or however you're gonna get it out. But that's the next step. So we're gonna take these out and, and it's kind of exciting. If it's really hot out, you probably wanna get gloves. This, this glass is smoking right now. I touched it with my fingers and then I changed my mind. I put some gloves on. Plus this is grippy. So I've got it and I don't want it to get hot. I'm like hot, hot, hot and it's glass, you know? So I need to push it up, tilt it and bring it back down. And it just goes straight up. It might feel a little sticky, depends on how good yours is sealing, right? But there's all sorts of things to be careful with. But I need my. Okay. And then. And then if you don't have somebody to be careful, or in this case, if I do, you have somebody to hand out. So William will put the camera down, and then I'll hand this out. Well, we're actually ready to take down this headliner. So you just got to, again, remember angle you you wiggle it you work you don't just yank right you just you, it needs a little wiggle so we're going to start here and work around remember i'm not taking these out a lot of guys will say take these out you can take them out if you want but you'll find out if you can do it without it because that's what we're about to do right now so i'm going to start out here since i've got this down i can carefully work around and i can see there we go that's that side put that back in there and that is, oh, don't let that keep you on potato plant. Okay, so that's the only challenge is this thing with that big sunroof wants to kink a little bit. So we'll get this out of the truck and then we'll start working on the next one. I'll show you what this looks like in there when we're finally to the part that we've been trying to get to the whole time. If you have the four door, you can't really get this out very easy, but because we have what I'm calling the, the two door extended cabs, now Ford calls it, it's like, crew cab versus super crew cab or whatever but um we're gonna take this out so but we gotta unclip there's two plugs back here before you do it same thing like all of them they're squeeze and unplug squeeze and unplug okay now now we can set that down and slide this out but what i want to show you is how this is held up in there so there's a couple magnets on this one then there's some velcro you can see this velcro just pulled right loose it just pulled loose so that's okay um, we're gonna take these off, restick them. It's just super hot in there, right? This just gets so baked. But now you can kind of see what's holding it together. There's some foam strips here that just gotta go on. And that's pretty much it. Okay, the part that we have all been waiting for. This is what has to come down. This track right here, which goes all the way around that sunroof, this metal piece right here, back here to where the motor is. All this has gotta come out. All of this would be avoided if the engineers just would have designed a way to take this loose by taking the windshield. All you gotta do is take that glass out and disconnect something to remove those pieces, but they don't. And so this is what we have to do. And this is why we're getting it done. So on this, you've got this bracket back here that's gotta come loose. You've got big bolts here. See these big bolts? Those gotta come loose. There's four to each side. And then you've got these smaller ones they go all the way around. So one of them is an eight and one of them I think is a 13. So the biggest 13 small ones, right? They, they go all the way around. All you gotta do is just go all the way around this, taking those bolts out. And remember, save these big ones maybe for last. And that's where you're gonna want some help is to take these last loose and drop them down and shift it out. So I'm sure you could do it by yourself. I don't, this isn't like ultra heavy, but it's, it's a little awkward. So, oh, I also forgot. You got these drain tubes right here. Indeed, I believe there's one at each corner. Yep, one at each corner. And uh, you definitely want to get those plugged back in when you're done or when it rains and that's open or you get a little leakage, you're going to find it really soon. So that's cool. All right, let's, uh, let's get this sucker rolling. Stuff like this. Uh huh? We're doing stuff like this? Yeah. Big bolts next. Remember, there's four. That's the last ones. So we got all the plugs off. Remember to take those off. Um, we got this back bracket off. We do have a plug here. I guess this would be a good time to do this right now, just so we don't forget. Same as always, there's a tab in the back you squeeze, and you drop down, and then that's the motor. So I'm going to take out one of these on each side 
and then we'll lose him and then we'll just kind of have to hold them all. Maybe set the camera up there. One thing that's interesting to note is the way that's lined up is that oval is pressed all the way up against this bolt. So again, just paying attention to how this is coming apart will help us when we put it back together. Yeah. All right, now we just do this three more times and we've got it. One thing we have to be careful of is get it around the airbags. Yeah. So I think we need to slide it to one side because there's a little bit of room. And then come down this side, like I'll get on that side, we'll go this way, down and over. Um, um, it's gonna just come from here. Okay, so that's gonna press on the, you gotta keep it up, it's gonna press right on the, yep. on the airbag. Ooh, hot seat almost out or at least I think it's almost out hey okay so we'll go my way oh so the whole assembly's coming down geez yeah yep yeah. so your way can you get it out that's as far as it'll go that's just can you kind of press Ooh. the airbag in a little bit okay yep we're clear on this side okay you good yep hold on right there now that we have it in here, both of these sides grenaded. So you can see my rags in here. This is a piece that came out before when I was in Sandpoint. But if you look here, those, even the parts that didn't break were already broken. They were breaking, but that broke. These slides broke, both sides. This, you can tell I had to put a zip tie in here to try to hold this down because there was nothing keeping this from flying out of the truck. We'll look at these a little bit more, but all this plastic breaks. See that? That's, that's broken and it's not completely broken yet, but if you look over here, there's like pieces like, look at this. How long has that been broken? I don't know, but it's this cheap plastic. And if it, Ford, if the plastic wasn't good enough and there was no way to get strong plastic, why didn't you replace it with metal pieces? It's one of the things I have a frustration with. This is the gear on the back side of the motor. That spins and it just pushes this up or down. So these cables run all the way down to here. So when we remove this, it's just hidden inside here. This will be really long. You can see how there's gaps here because when this pulls back, this cable just runs itself along there. So we've got to take the motor out. Then we've got to take these rivets out. See these rivets right here? We've got to drill those out. Those got to be drilled out on both sides so we can get this back tray out because once again, Ford did not make it easy. Why, why, why? You could have made this so this was detachable with bolts, but no, if this ever goes out, which you never will in a million years, We'll just replace the whole thing. That's how we're gonna look at it. This cross brace has to come out and stop and seal. That's easy though, that's just screws. Uh, but this comes out, motor comes out, rivets come out. Then we can slide the crap components out, clean the channels, grease it, and then put the new ones back in. And then we can start putting it back together, which is really cool. There is something at the end of the video that you, if you feel like you got this and you're gonna just jump around, I guess that's fine, but I think you should look at this because this all has to be calibrated at the end. When you put it in, it's not hard when you know how to do it, but you have to calibrate this so you teach the truck where the stop points are. And then you have to make sure also when you start putting these back together, that both sides are exactly the same because when this thing was grenading itself, it actually jumped the track here. So I gotta make sure these aren't damaged because it was skipping a tooth. So they're out of alignment now and that's not good. No one wants to be out of alignment, Mr. Roboto. Okay, so we flip this over because there's three of these bolts we gotta take out right here. This is a T20, and so that's nice because you just run those out. And you'll notice I'm using a drill gun to take them out. I will not be using a drill gun to put in. This is going into plastic. Metal screws and plastic is a bad combo with this, but it's great to take them out that way. So we'll take that out. There we go. That just comes out nice and easy. Don't lose the bolts. Check the gears because it's stripped. Those actually all look no pretty thing. good. Okay, we flipped it back over now. So we're back on the top. And again, there's these two Phillips screws here. There's hardly anything. Those come right on out. And there's that little lip here. That's pretty normal on stuff where one side goes into a groove and then it, and then, and then the other side clips in or it screws down. So see how that is? But pay attention to this because when you put it back, you know how that goes in. Okay, that's it. Now we'll start drilling out. We'll get ready for the, the rivets. That's the hardest part. Now it's time to drill. You can see this is flipped over with this kind of angling up um, and where it's the top is sitting down on this. We've got to drill out these rivets. So that's our next order. There's three on each side, like I said, two here, two here. So we're gonna drill those out. Um, you can get just, all you gotta do is get a big enough drill bit to like take that lip out. I'm gonna tell you, 
to wear glasses because I had to have my eyeball drilled out because I got a piece of metal in it. And that sucks, don't do it. On rivets, I like to kind of wobble them. There you go, until that comes out, see? I am. I'm gonna do that three more times. Okay, clean off the little metal bits. And then this now is loose, this can just pop up. The only thing I'd caution you is when you're drilling these out, just that top ring pops off. You don't want to drill any of this plastic. Now this is held on with buter, so it's kind of sticky, but it should just pop. It should just lift right up on both sides a little bit. You gotta be a little careful because you remember you got these tubes that are running through, these cables that are running through. So you kind of just want to lift a little bit and then pull out. But we're also trying to preserve this buter so you can reuse it because it's very malleable. And then these just pull on out. Remember, left side is outside, right side is inside. When it's this side. Bloop. There we go. We set that part aside. So one thing that I guess that would be helpful is once you get that top off, you kind of want to drill these a little bit more to get the mushroom because they kind of pinch it in. Just take a little punch and just pop those down. I like that one already fell out. And then just get all the shavings out of here because you don't want those either getting into the track and you don't want them in this buter because this is what is your water dam. So undo my temporary fix here, which was to just hold that in place. And then this just stuff starts sliding out. So see how that block slides right there? It's in between. So you can take this out first and no one cares if you break it because it sucks. Right out. And then you fling it as hard as you can because it sucks. Then you can take this out, right on out until you hit that stop. And I want to show you that because you have to tap this down. See how that divot goes down that piece there and then it's brought up there? That's on purpose so that you can't, this doesn't ever accidentally inside the cab go past that. So we'll tap that down, then we'll finish taking this crap out and then we'll put the new stuff in. One thing I would do, whatever you're pounding down on, put it directly under so the force transfers down so you're not flexing the crap out of this. And this is a pretty thick metal, so you're gonna have to smack this pretty good. And then you can just check it. There we go. So you don't have to go 100% flush. It's gotta be pretty close though, and then it slides right out. And then we'll tap that back. When you take this apart, like I said, you've got this one, make sure you hold on to this. But this piece right here, you're not keeping. This is part of the new component. They just slide out, but this one's busted on that end. Just notate how that goes together. So that's it. And you can just stick this like, I don't know, wherever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably just drape it through there, but there you go, garbage. This has some pressure to it, and that, but. Ah, there we go. Okay, yes. now we don't have to show all this. We're gonna clean this up really well because we got new grease that comes with the kit and then we're gonna put um, the new pieces in. This is just so busted up. Look, at that's broken. I mean, besides all the pieces that fell out, there's a crack there. That's, that's cracked bad right there. This is really great stuff because it cleans through this grease. You can get down the channels. Think about how many stupid pieces are in this track and I don't want those in there. So I'm gonna spray and clean this out. We'll just, we'll just wipe this out and we'll make sure it's nice and clean and it just cuts right through that grease. So first thing I'm gonna do is just good old fashioned grease wiping. Public service announcement, besides I got it in my eyes, this stuff absorbs in your body almost instantly. And I have a family member, I won't even say who, who went through cancer because he worked on heavy equipment and that crap goes straight into your hands and straight into your bladder. And that's where you got cancer. It's bad news, just wear gloves. What I want to show you though, and the reason why we're making this video, besides that we did like to hang out and hopefully it's fun, is this is the extent of your instructions. Now I really like this company. They're just assuming that you know how to get to this part right here. Um, and it doesn't explain all the stuff we went through. I'm also going to show you how easy it is if you know where to look because there's left hand and right. So, so both sides are specific. They're not interchangeable. When you're, when you're looking at this, some of these are easy. This part's labeled right or left. Right side is if you're looking forward to the front of the vehicle, this is the curve, right? So if you're looking at this, that curve is the front of the vehicle. This is the right hand side, that's easy. This one has right hand, left hand right there. So on the top of this thing, see how this is the top? It's right there, right hand, left hand. And then this one, we actually had to look at for a minute and William's the one that found it, cause I'm like, where the heck is it? It's right there. It's on the very top, that's right and left. Now, I wanna show you something. I didn't take the side out yet. I always do that on purpose. 
because it gives me something to look at, right? So I can take this and go, well, it shouldn't match this side. If this is the right, it shouldn't match the left, and it does not, everything is reversed. But I can tell, because I left one side intact. So now all we're gonna do is take this awesome grease, they give you this little swab. Just, you gotta grease every part that's moving. So right, so like those channels move, those move, right? Um, all the pieces that snap together, we're gonna put some grease on there. Definitely grease down the track. You can see how this already dried out. It's only been a few minutes. There's a little bit of grease left in there, but it came out really clean and the brake fluid's gone. And then we start sliding everything back together the same way we took it out, but you can look at that one to make sure, okay? So this part number that tells you this is the right side, that goes forward and that goes down. Just kind of again, look at the other side. When you start this, you gotta be really careful. Watch your thumbs, because I blew my glove out. Now I'm gonna get all greasy, but I got it all over me anyway. So just wiggle it, careful, because this is all plastic still. Even though this is new plastic, this is still plastic. And I don't, okay, so this is so slimy now. Yeah, we can. Thank you. There we go, it's just a little tight spot. So when we get this slid to here, don't forget to put this back in here. And look how this is all one piece. Remember how this was two pieces? It's not supposed to be two pieces. I can't believe how bad this was broken. So we're gonna push, pull it at the same time. Thank you, if you could hold that, that'd be amazing. Grab it by a part that won't move. This is really tight. So I'm gonna wait till I get that in a little bit more. There oh, we go. Nice. So that's probably what I'm doing. That's a good tip. See, when I push on this, it isn't one solid piece. This slides in that channel. And I think I was causing a pinch. So it looks like you gotta, Press both of them at the same time. Of course, I'm too far now, but that's okay. Because we are getting this. Yeah, because if you only push from the back, you're going to torque the arm just a little bit and it's going to cause it to jam up. Pinch it. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay, now I got a wedge. And you're going to go all the way to the front. It's important when you do these, both sides go all the way to the front. Now, both sides are all the way flat. If you don't do that, when you line up that back when we put it together, these aren't going to be in sync, and then you're going to be disappointed. So, okay. And just in case we didn't mention, thorough on the grease. Yeah, thorough on the grease. Basically, you want to use about half, right, on this half of the jug or half of this tube on this side. Don't, don't be stingy. Go get more if you have to, but there should be plenty in here. Now this side, I'm going to do the wear points here, and then I'm going to put some more in the channel here. We'll slide this in and we'll lock it into place. I'm gonna give you a little bit of adjustment on this one. If you press this all the way down, that piece actually will pop up out of that groove. So what I would say is it needs to be all the way down, just line up that edge with that opening. See, there's a slot right there. If I press down, it'll be really hard to get back up, but that will come out. So, so I'm gonna say that, then we slide this in, then we hit, plug that in here and that's it. Now, the most important part is whatever you do here, the most important part is you just match the other side. So you pick a spot where you go, I like it all the way forward. I like this adjustment at this spot. And then you just gotta make sure you do that on the other side and then you'll be fine. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the other side. Then we'll flip it over and we'll start putting our rivets back in place. I wanna show you how this goes on so you don't forget. See these little fuzzies? That goes down. See these bracket, these holes? That goes towards the front. And remember there's this little lip right here. It goes under that and it drops down. Now there's two holes here. Uh, just get it started. Don't don't put it all the way in until you get both sides in. And now this is, see those little coarse threads? That just cuts its way into the plastic. This isn't metal, so there, you have to get it in there straight, which means we're gonna wanna start that on both sides. And it's not hard, it's just, you can see it's already starting crooked, so I'm gonna strain it out on purpose. I'm gonna get it to where it's not quite tight. We're gonna do this side again. And don't be afraid to back it back out if you're going down the wrong thread. Yeah, that's a very good point. And then now all I'm gonna do is kind of split the difference on this. There's a little bit of play there, right there. And then snug, this is plastic, remember. Plastic. Remember all the problems that came apart with the plastic? is plastic. Okay, and that's it. This is getting very exciting. Are you getting excited? If you're doing this, I hope you are, we're getting excited. Now we're gonna flip this. We're gonna put that back piece on then the rivets, then the motor, and then it's time to put the sucker back together. And then we gotta do the calibration at the end. That's an important part, but this is really cool because the broken pieces have been repaired now. This is what seals the water dam and then forces the water down that channel. So all you need to do is take a screwdriver and there's 
plenty of it and just spread it around on both sides, especially along what I'm going to call the perimeter, right? The edges. That's what needs to be completely sealed. It's still very good. I'm going to put it over there. And we can test this once we get to put it back together, but once it's back together, it's going to be hard to do anything about. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. I'm going to keep doing that. Do that on both sides. And then we'll flip this, I'll, we'll put it in. I'll show you how we line these cables up next. So we got that down. Before we put this on, we've got to slide these in. Do you remember what we said when this is up this way? The right side was in, right? And you gotta watch the, the pewter, because it wants to grab that. So you gotta start sliding that side in. You gotta watch the pewter? Pewter, excuse me. I'm just careful not to kink this. I mean, it's very, very flexible, obviously. It goes in a dang circle, but and then you just, you can press it, but it's gonna start getting sticky. So you just gotta kinda shove it on there. Well, it's rivet time. This is one thing you're gonna need. You don't need to have as nice a rivet gun as this. The only thing this tube is on here is it catches the part that breaks off. But it comes with the rivets, so once you get them lined up, I put a couple in just so I can hold it so I can show this to you easier because you need both hands. We just put this on here. We open that up, we squeeze it once, squeeze it twice, and it breaks off that end. Now, if I wanted to, the fancy rivet would drop that in there, but since I don't want to do that, I'm just gonna drop it. I'm gonna take it out <laughs> by hand and throw it in there. See, it's nice if you just wanna do that, but I, I don't know why I did that. So that's all you gotta do six times total. Um, and then we flip it over, we put the motor, and then we, we run it with a manual test, because you cannot run this with the electric power without the window, you will be extremely disappointed. But there is a way to do it manually and we can test it. So I'll put the rest of these in, we'll flip it over and put the motor in. Oh man, is it getting exciting now. So this just goes back on. Um, remember it's with like the tray side up. It will only go in one way. These fortunately are lined up and you can't accidentally put it on the wrong side. And they just, just wiggle it in there. So we'll put these back in and uh, we'll tighten it down. And then we'll do our test. Okay, so you think we can flip this? You can do one hand. You hold that, I'll do two. We can do it. We gotta oh. flip this over. We flip a rise it. And now we do our test. So make sure the saw horses are lined up on the track. That's not gonna grab anything here. And on the bottom side of this is you have this pin right here. So underneath here, see that right there? That's your manual lever. This is 532nd is what fits us. So you can manually turn this. Don't do it with anything but your hands because you don't know how this is going to go, right? So, see how those go? Okay, and you see the grooves there? Yep. The channel's moving. Okay, so on that side, we're gonna go all the way forward, and that's it. So all the way up is when you get that tilt function. And I feel like that's good. That's all the way forward, both sides. Okay, now we're gonna go back down really slow. Don't, do not rush this. Everything has gotta get greased still. Remember, we just put grease in holes. It's distributing itself now. There's parts that haven't moved before. Okay, here we go. See how that works? Okay, now, see how both sides are pulling back nicely? This is where it's good that we're doing this. I forgot, we have to flip this over and punch those stops back out. Oh, yep. Or we will overextend it and there'll be no way to calibrate this. So, see? That's why it's good you watch this first. Let's flip that over, we'll punch those. Then we'll complete the test. I only wanted to show it to you up at this point. See, that was on purpose. It's not a long way. We don't want to go too far with these. Ooh, that almost fell over. Okay, that's through. I'll punch this one. Then we'll flip it and we'll check it. Now that we've done that and we flipped it back, you can see the tabs are up as they're supposed to be now. So we're going to finish running this all the way back. And then there's another test that happens when we get it all the way back. And that is, or both of those at those stops and even. Okay, that's it. Yep. Hit the stops, okay. So that feels pretty good on both sides. So now what we will do is we gotta run it all the way back to the end and then we just gotta put it in. So I'll run it all the way back. You don't have to watch that boring part and then we get to do the install. That's, ex that's darn exciting because then we get to test it. So Mr. Jake, what have we come upon? Well, we cannot follow our normal rule. The normal rule is if you don't have to assemble something to test it, don't do it because then you know before you put it all together. And I thought we could do that on this one, um, but we cannot because what Ford did is they ran the wiring harness up to this back back here and this plug back here 
back there runs all the way forward on the headliner, jags around a bunch of other crap, and then up here to this. What I was hoping to do, we cannot do, so we have to take the headliner and we have to put it in so we can plug this back in so that we can test that. So let's just hope and pray, like for real, Lord, please, 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 let this work. We just need the big one to test this. I'm very nervous about this, I don't deny it. Just in case it carries any current or something. Moment of truth. Here's how you calibrate this. First, we have to run it back with the glass. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's a slide. That's the wrong one. <laughs> We're all good. This is still slide. Oh, crap. Here we go. Please, 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 please. Da -da. Da -da. Okay, we're not done. So when we slid that back, what we have to do now is you have to hold the back button. And what you're going to do is you've got to hold it for long enough where you hear this thing. It's going to, you're going to see a twitch. It has to go back and twitch, and then it's calibrating the back position. So you hold it back, and then keep holding it for a while. So I'm pretty sure that twitch didn't happen already. Oh no, oh sorry. You have to hold, go hold it back like that, then you have to let off, and then you hold it again. There we go. Now that's calibrated. Now we're gonna close it. <laughs> Let's try to tilt. We're not done yet. Oh my gosh, it's freaking working. <laughs> Let's go all the way. Oh, good night. Oh my gosh. Let's look at the top. We almost got this. We got to do one more check on the top and make sure that that is going all the way flush. Cause this is where you can adjust. See, so see, we need to adjust this now that we've ran it. It's not coming up. It's, it's got a big gap right here. So we need to take it back apart. It wasn't, we didn't know where the flat point was. We were only guessing, which is why we didn't go crazy on the adjustment. Front, we got pretty good. How's that front look, is it? On well, this side, it's pretty good as well. Okay, so all we gotta do is loosen the back, like those two bolts we showed you. We raise it back up to where we like it. We test it one more time, but oh my gosh, we're close. Let's do that one more time, test it, and then, then, then we get it. Well, hello, Uncle Jake. Yes, hello. How are you? I think I'm pretty good. We may have done it. it. Let's try it one more time. Hands off. And we're not dealing with any, any sound. Oh my gosh. I think we've done it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Enjoy some bloopers. Enjoy some bloopers. There were a few. <laughs> a few. Oh my gosh. So, ouch, watch your head, that's one part. Owie, <laughs> not being a blooper. <laughs> For the same reason, if there was just some shade. Yeah. Just some shade. Who oh, wanted some shade? Now oh, you test these. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tastes good. Tastes good. Tastes like Ford. <laughs> 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 so, Mr. Jake. Yes, sir. What has happened? <laughs> yeah, let's look at what happened. Like, why didn't you rivet this too? This would never have to come apart. All right, I'm gonna stop complaining. <laughs> that was, stop, stop criticizing. It's okay. Who we can it? blame Wabasto Sunroofs. What? <laughs> yep. There's a, a sticker that says Wabasto Sunroofs. Freaking Wabastos. What is wrong with you? Why would you make this so difficult? You could have made this so much easier. Bastards, shame on you. You don't want to put it together and take it apart and put it together and take it apart? You know, and put as it together? awesome as it would be, probably not. Let's let's skip that up again. I'm gonna give this part back to you. We can't mm -hmm. use that. Not yet, all right. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We can do this. It's fine, we're all fine here. <laughs> How are you? Holy cow. Okay, well, that's really, really good. See, calmness. It helps it helps when you have a helper who's also keeping calm. And and brains work together. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> what the crap? Okay, here you go. Well, hello there, my friend. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in anything else on this Raptor F-150, there's a whole bunch of stuff. We'll put some videos at the end. God bless you. God bless America. I'm so happy about this. It's a Fismore Frenchman on the way out. Whoop out.
Yes.